Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for February 22nd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, good evening, Ms. Burner. If you would call roll, please. Yeah. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. And we thank you for this wonderful city. We pray that you peace be in this meeting and that you would guide us all and let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders and bless our military, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, I'll need uh, action on the uh, minutes for the special meeting held on January 27th, 2022. So moved. Second. Uh, go with Mr. Vice Mayor and second by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Any discussion, Council, on those minutes? And when you're ready. All right, Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. All right, and then we'll need to accept the minutes for the uh, regular scheduled council meeting for February uh, 7th, 2022. So moved. Second. By Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell. Any discussion, council? Are you ready? Okay, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Count Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6 0. All right. Thank you very much. And moving on to number seven, the city manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, council, and members of the public. Uh, so we'll start off with the police report with our uh, police uh, deputy, uh, McDuffie. <laughs> All right. Deputy McDuffie, the sheriff's office here in New Crow. Um, I have a stat for the month of January, last month. We patrolled 4,771 miles. We responded to 136 calls for service. With 25 police reports taken, 57 assists, which is typically the parking area. We had three criminal arrests, one felony, one misdemeanor, and one warrant. Conducted 68 traffic stops, 44 of those were warnings, 24 were citations. 183 business checks, we took total of two crashes. All right. Any questions for Devin? Council? Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy McDuffie. And moving on. Oh, sir. I have a question, I guess, for Mr. Bridge on the police report. Who's our police administrator? Sergeant Lehman. Okay, thank you. Yep. We good? Yeah, I just haven't seen him. I'm wondering why. <laughs> I'll discuss that with you. Okay. After, but, yeah. Okay. And moving on to the uh, city manager report, our fire and EMS with Chief Trustee. Mayor, Council, citizens. For the month of January, the Nicolau Fire Division responded to 30 EMS calls in the city and 13 in Elizabeth Township. <laughs> the division responded to two fire-related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had six EMS calls answered by mutual aid either by Pike Township or, or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls for, for Pike Township. We answered four mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Uh, other than that, the status pretty poor in, in the fire division. <coughs> Council, any questions for Chief? Mm -hmm. Chief, the, uh, the medic's back up and running after the accident, correct? Well, it's been back. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's, it's been back for almost two months now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the finance report, our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public. This is going to be our January finance report. Um, starting out for the beginning of the year 2022, we have an estimated budget for revenue of $6,814,884. 
And for our estimated appropriations is $7,853,526. Those numbers will be updated every month as we collect the actual revenue and spend against it, the appropriations. So for the month of January, we did receipt $567,869.37. And for the month of January, we expended $381,705.01. Bank reconciliations are also on my monthly report, and all the bank accounts are balanced and adjusted, and the bank uh, book balance is $6,200,442.83. Along with my um, all my lengthy reports, I do have the income tax for the collections for the first month of January, and we are, in a comparisons from last year, up about 2%. And if there's any other questions I can entertain, I'd be glad to. Council. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, thank you for that report, Ms. Harris. Uh, one question is, uh, are we still putting the checkbook online, on the higher checkbook? Yes. Uh, oh, no, we haven't done that for a couple years, but it can be updated. Uh, when they did the conversion, I'm not sure that they had updated it, but okay. it's something we can talk about. The uh, question for Mr. Bridge, do we need a motion for that to happen? Uh, if council would like that to go back on, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I make a motion that we update the Ohio checkbook for transparency for the city of New Carolina on the Ohio checkbook website. <laughs> Get all that. Second. Ms. Emily, or partner. Does any council member want an explanation of what exactly that is? <laughs> yes, please. So uh, I think in 2016, the former uh, Mandel uh, did initiative for uh, local communities and school districts to publish their budget online for transparency. Uh, local level is your most transparent level, local level of government. We have the budget uh, for inspection at our city building, but it is an extra step that we can do. So basically, it's just our budget on a database that anyone can see on the web. And we had a few, few successes with it, but not, not too many. Any added cost? No. Do we have a second for that motion? Second. Ben. Bob. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Mm. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Wait, Councilman Rollo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Yes, that's what she did that last week. Too. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. That motion passes 6-0. One more question, sir. Follow up question. When will this take place? How, uh, soon, we'll, I'll definitely, how soon can we get this on? We'll let you know. Um, I'll send an email. Uh, Ms. Harris can start working on it this week. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Harris, I just had one more just kind of on tax season. Uh, citizens can still call up to the city building and set up an appointment with Vicki, right, if they have any questions, concerns with their tax forms and whatnot? Absolutely. And she can make appointments to sit down with anyone that would like assistance on filling out the income tax. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Back. Uh, we need a motion for the finance. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay. Councilman Rogold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And moving on to the city manager report, our service report with Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Evening, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start underneath the Public Works Department. Um, Again, I state this, please call in if you see potholes out there, and we are well aware of the ones on Church Street and a few others, just because we've had uh, a ton of rain and then the freezing temperatures in between, it's not helping this year. So um, we'll be filling those with cold patch um, as they appear. Um, we also will be working on a little bit more of our uh, winter tree removal that we do. Um, it's a lot easier to do when we don't have uh, leaves on them. So we do have a little bit more of that to do. Under the water department, um, I am currently working with the utility clerk and getting our Excel spreadsheet for the sanitary survey for all private wells that are located within the city as part of our backflow program uh, mandated by the EPA. Uh, we just had performed an annual leak detection and we had found several leaks. 
and main brakes. So, so far the crew's repaired six of those main brakes uh, so far. And a lot of times, uh, none of our uh, leaks or when we start seeing flows go up, do they surface? Because we're in sand and gravel uh, anywhere up to 100 feet deep. So, you know, we have to call the company in and uh, find those. So we're definitely working on those. Um, the uh, TC Holzen, who is the contractor, will be doing the, the um, foundations for Adam Street Tower demo. They've already done their locates to make sure there's no gas lines or anything else. So they're getting ready to start that. We have submitted and we're still waiting. I think on March 1st, I'll get an update on the infrastructure grant uh, for two and a half million to replace those lead goosenecks we have in the old section of town. So um, hopefully by then we'll get an update. There's three, so far there's been three rounds. We didn't know they were going to do them in rounds, but who knows? Because um, also in the general fund, there's two hundred fifty thousand dollars sitting aside to be uh, for the consultant and engineer uh, to engineer this portion. Under the sewer department, uh, our engineering agreement has been executed to start um, our bidding process for secondary clarifier number one. The secondary clarifier two is currently in the manufacturing process. Uh, that'll be about 20 weeks out, and then um, you will see an ordinance come before you probably next council meeting um, to award, or well, introduction, but then to award the contractor uh, to install that. And then the other uh, two clarifiers, um, one for the bidding, and then this other uh, primary clarifier that we got 50% of OPWC funds, um, that will be starting in July. You cannot use OPWC funds until after July. Um, so by spring of 23, all four of our um, primary and clar secondary clarifiers will all be brand new. Um, 2022 road reconstruction resurfacing projects, uh, currently working with the county um, to try and get a list of uh, roads uh, that we want to resurface. Um, ones that are kind of hitting our list right now is Henry, Villa, uh, Finnish Falcon, get that section done. And then if we still have any funds left over, we will probably hit some uh, bad areas um, throughout town and some patching. Um, we currently got a um, Burgess and Nipel uh, awarded a task order through Springfield Clark County Transportation Coordinating Committee. Uh, they get funds from the federal government that helps uh, fund um, engineers to come through and kind of tell you about things. You know, if there's a project you want to get started, and they give you the kind of the beginning, the conceptual details of those. So they will be coming in. We have a kickoff meeting, I believe it's going to be next week, to work on the ADA ramps along 235 and then the curb and gutter along Main Street as well and tell us what the best approach will be to uh, get that out. Because as I passed out before, most of the concrete under 235 was a monolithic pour, which means the curb, gutter, underneath all that asphalt was done at once. So it's not just ripping out curb putting 304 back in and, and relaying it. So they'll come in, they'll give us a full um, uh, breakdown, <coughs> cost estimate, so we'll have a true uh, price on what it will take uh, to get these items done before spring of 23 when um, 235 will be resurfaced by uh, ODOT. And that is all I have on my report. I can entertain anything with that or any extra questions. Got any questions for Mr. Kiko? Sir? One question. Uh, Mr. Kiko, when the streets and the plats are done, are they also doing curbs at the same time, or are they going to be ripping the, they're just going to be topping it, cutting, cutting about two inches off and topping it, or are they going to be ripping it out and uh, completely rebuilding, reconstructing the street? So the overlay ones like we've done through the Willowook area, through the Zimmer, uh, uh, Zimmerman um, Langdale area, they're, they're mill and fills from about two inch to zero just to keep our crown. So a lot of our roads do not have crown. Curb and gutter portion is on a on a case by case basis. We kind of budget about 10% on where it's bad. Like Edbrook had really bad curb. Um, some places don't. So if we if it's got a little bit crumbling on it, we will not go in there and rip out a 10 foot section just to do that piece of curb. So typically, um, you know, like there's one on Henry that's kind of pushed up. That 10 feet will do that because there's nothing but clay under there. So it's. We just budget a little bit, but it's not full reconstruction like we do with some of the CDBG projects. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, on the curves on Main, are we just going to be attempting to repair the ones that are really bad, or are you trying to do a full length of the street? I want to say yes and to be determined, okay. depending on what they go through, because they'll do all kinds of measurements and give us what, what the best case scenario would be for and you know, how much will it cost. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Right. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. 
Thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with the city manager report, our planning and zoning report with our planning director, Mr. Hutchinson. Good evening, council members and citizens. Uh, so tonight I've got stats for code compliance for January. Uh, we had 14 new violations uh, and then 68 total code uh, activities. That's new inspection, reinspection, and then zoning permit inspections. Um, code compliance continued. Uh, we will be presenting uh, council with a draft of a new exterior property maintenance code. Um, ours is, is, to my knowledge, not been updated very, you know, very recently. Uh, so this will be a, a modern bring it up to date that code. Uh, so we'll bring that draft to you in March. Uh, zoning, we're at 13 zoning applications here to date. Uh, two Board of Zoning Appeal uh, applications received. Those will both be heard by you all on the 7th. Uh, that was for a sign variance and a rear setback. Uh, and then planning board, uh, the next meeting will be on March 22nd. Uh, at this time, all I have for that is um, we're going to be looking at a community garden um, ordinance that uh, has to do with uh, the community gardens. Uh, and also, there is a presentation from a developer for uh, a new uh, concept or a concept plan. Uh, economic development meeting. Uh, I had a me meeting with the SBDC, Small Business Development Center of Ohio, uh, the Springfield chapter. This was a great meeting. Uh, this group uh, does a lot for Clark County. Uh, they assist uh, small businesses in startup assistance, marketing guidance, sales coaching, financial advising, operations consulting, management coaching. Um, they do a lot. And they also have a new pilot program, which they received a $1 million grant for. Uh, to assist small business or startup businesses. Um, this is out of 500 some municipalities applied for this grant and Springfield was one of, I think, one of very few that got a grant for that. Uh, so if there's anybody out there uh, wanting to either expand, start up a new business or looking for these, they could contact myself uh, or they could contact the Small Business Development Center directly in Clark County. Uh, they're in the Springfield area, uh, but I could definitely put you in touch with them. Uh, CHIP grant update, um, actually since I created this report we will have an update uh, and a launch of the CHIP program on the 7th, at the 7th meeting. Uh, so we will have a, uh, a presentation describing all the details about the CHIP grant coming up. Volunteers still needed to form a group, an uh, assistance group for, uh, to assist our residents to help with maintenance and repairs. Uh, we tool lending center still going. Uh, we so we'll be able to supply tools and possibly even some materials for some projects. Uh, but we need some volunteers, a handyman that could be from the schools, anybody um, that'd be willing to to lend some time uh, and some help, uh, help to help some of our residents in need. Uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, as of right now, council is acting as a VZA. Uh, so we still have five openings, so we do need volunteers and members for that board as well. Uh, and that's all I got tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Council, any questions or comments? I just have one, Mr. Hutchinson. How's the tool learning program going with it being wintertime? Uh, it, it, it slowed down a little bit. Uh, we, we do have some, some you know, we have plenty of tools for indoor projects, so we do still have some of those going out. Um, I did... Uh, do have in the works uh, some plans. We get some of our tools from Menards and they do the 11% rebate. So I do have some rebate monies out there that I'd be able to put right back into the project. So um, uh, be looking to add some more stuff. I think we're gonna add maybe for the spring, uh, I'm looking at possibly doing some automotive repair and stuff, maybe jack stands, um, automotive tools. So, you know, for those that, that need maybe do some work on their, their own vehicle, they could uh, use some tools from the lending closet. So, um, doing great, doing great. Great, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Bird, back to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hutchinson. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items, uh, just a few discussion topics that we need to discuss with council. Uh, first thing is board renewals. So on our planning board, uh, I need a motion to approve uh, Alvin Putterball and Mrs. Patricia McFarland to a new three-year term. This term will end on 1231 of 2025. And again, this is for the planning board. I'll move. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Are you ready, Ms. Burner? Okay. Councilman Bond? 
Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. And we need a, another motion. This is for our Parks and Recreation Board member, Ms. Brandy Mullet. Her term will be ending 12 31 of 2025. So moved. Second. Uh, Lindsay, and then second by Mr. Cook, I guess. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> Good. Yes, please. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. That motion passes 6 0. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. And thank you for those motions. And uh, <clears throat> moving on under discussion topics, the assistant clerk for council um, has put his resignation in. Uh, that is me. I just have got too much going on uh, managing the city and uh, filling in when Ms. Berner is uh, not able to attend. So unfortunately, I will have to drop that uh, duty. Um, what I can do is put on Facebook, uh, asking for someone to take the place. Mr. Mayor. Sir. We can decline his resignation, can we? <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I guess the question is, your kids play any spring sports? No. So we're good. Hey, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll give us some time to find a replacement then. Your mom did. <laughs> said that. So you just, we'll just run it on social media? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and they'll see what we get. But uh, basically, we would need a someone to fill in for Ms. Burner when she is not here, and that is simply just taking the notes and taking uh, the motions. Uh, Ms. Burner, I'm pretty sure we'll continue on doing the minutes, but we can discuss about all that later. Uh, but just watch our Facebook page if you are interested in assisting the city. That'd be awesome. Uh, moving on with the city manager report. So, coffee and donuts. Uh, council, something you guys want to get back? It was a great event. Um, talking with. Uh, uh, Councilman Cook, maybe do a pizza and a pop. Councilman Chicken, you know, anything that you can get to get back in front of the You're on a roll. Keep going. I, that's, I, I, I stopped at three. <laughs> that's what I got. So the pizza and the pop, one of the bonuses with that is it's, it's an after, it would be an evening opposed to a morning. Um, most of those events seem to, be, seem to be good, but yeah. ultimately for you guys to decide. So if you don't want to do anything with that now, maybe at the next meeting, kind of just ponder it over for the next couple weeks and yeah. re revisit. Um, or you can make a motion to get something set now. It's really up to you guys. I'm just giving you a friendly reminder. We've been doing the coffee and donuts quarterly. Yes. When would the next one? That's for, that's for you when guys. was the last one? Last one was October. October. Mm -hmm. We yep. held off on having one in January until we were fully staffed. Or yeah, because of the council. The council. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, I would say we just hold off to the second quarter figure something out for early April. Yep. Right, so Good. Mr. Lindsay. When did they, uh, when did you guys do this? In the morning or weekend? Yeah, it was I think like 9 to nine noon to or 9 to 11 or something like that. Saturday yeah. Saturday? Yeah, I had a lot of good turnout. Really? Yeah, okay. so. I, I was just curious about that. Okay. So I guess we'll revisit it. Next week? Yes. Okay. Next week? Note. Next meeting? Next meeting. <laughs> Okay, um, so moving on to city manager's report. Had a few discussion with two council members and coming back and forth council tonight, see if the council as a whole wants to move forward with this, but this is really just establishing additional committees for council. Um, and this is going to facilitate multiple things, but the biggest thing is increased communication between administration and council. So we know we already have the existing boards like planning board, board and zoning appeals, tax review boards, parks and rec boards. These are more department focused boards, like your financial board or your public safety board, your public utility boards. We have a couple members of council on each board, a couple members of citizen and the appropriate administrative head that, de that heads that department. So for example, we use finance. Uh, one to two council members, a few members of the public that have a financial background would meet, um, um, however often you guys so choose with our finance director, ponder some things over, Colleen comes back to me, and then we move forward with you know the things that council as a whole wants to do once they come back and talk about it. These are very common in other cities. Um, so this is another thing you guys might have to ponder as we visit next week. Uh, but to forward to move forward with this, I'm going to want majority of council's uh, approval because we started working on a book, and I want to say in 18 or 19, and it's about 70 pages long. So before I finish that, I want to make sure that we again have all support before we get done with that. 
Um, so is that again something you want me to note to ponder for next week, or how do you guys want to move forward with that one? I would favor. I would wait till yeah next week or whatever. Just give a little bit of time to think about it. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. At, at face value, it's me. a good idea. I don't see any negative side to it. Like a little bit. Of time. Okay. Anything that you two want to add? Are you are we good with? Are you good with this? I think if we put this into motion, I think you will see a lot more communication and a lot more knowledge about what's going on with the city. This will also free Mr. Bridge up from trying to, I guess the word is enlighten all seven of us. So if we do this, I think the communication will be greatly improved. A number of other cities do that. Sure. Enan does, mm -hmm. each council member, village council member is a member of a committee, and then they report on the meeting. Sure. And we'll have some exceptions to that, like the planning board, the BZA, I don't think they have existing council members set. But these are for the more of the department focused ones, like your finance, your public safety, mm -hmm. your streets. And there's one in there for administrative that can meet with me, you know, to, to deal with things. Um, but I'll go ahead. It sounds like a majority of council is going to behind it. I'll go and finish that book. It's going to take me a few days. Um, and then what I'll do is email it out to everyone once it's done. So you guys can kind of just get your hands on it and maybe next meeting, take a look at it then. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Charter Review, they are really going along and what I heard, they're doing a fantastic job. So I have been in contact with them. So um, I was asked to, today to, to just mention this out there for you guys as, again at the next meeting. We're gonna ask, or they're gonna ask uh, for some sort of motion to move forward with our current model of their charter or the uh, updated model uh, charter that they uh, submitted to you guys at, the, at that work session. I know it's a lot for you guys to get through. That document was rather large as well. So we weren't expecting you guys to have that done for this meeting. But for the next meeting, I think their charter review is going to want that guidance mm -hmm. so they know what model to use. Um, so next meeting, again, we'll ask for a motion on that that we can uh, supply them with further guidance on what to do. Mr. Hall, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I did speak with uh, Mayor Lowry this afternoon has intentions on trying to attend our uh, scheduled meeting this Thursday at 5.30 uh, just to get some feelers of you know, kind of where we're at and also just to kind of some re-attacks on any questions after we've reviewed some of the materials. The invitation is also open to all council members. Um, we're just kind of postured uh, right now at a, at a crossroads, uh, just waiting on further guidance which direction we go. Okay, awesome. It's all right. Still at least. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lee's Chicken, 5.30 uh, in the banquet room on Thursday. Open to the public, but it's not free food. <laughs> Say, has your guys' cholesterol went up? Uh, last one good for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hall. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you. Oh, and something fun to talk about. 2022 Fireworks. I did get a call from American Fireworks. They did email me the contract. So I have to start negotiating that. <clears throat> so I know council put 20000 in for the fireworks show. But we need to keep some of that for um, um, additional costs, um, maybe security, food, whatever the case might want to be. Um, where's council's head at for a price on that fireworks? Where were we at last year? 17. 17. So I think it was. I think it was a little bit lower than 17. Um, but I think that earlier in the budget discussions, I think for this year we said 17. Um, so I can negotiate that a little bit. I mean, we have a 20,000 budget to work with. I would assume we're not going to go any more than 17. But it's worth to leave some wiggle room for additional services if council wants to do that. I think everybody, I mean, everything I heard and seen mm -hmm. was happy with the show and it yep. was at 17. I would just stick with it. Okay. So the other thing is we got to nail down a date. So talking to the company, having it 4th of July weekend, that weekend would be very difficult just because we don't have the budget to support. Okay. They're going to go for the bigger ones. You know, the Dayton's where they unfortunately get more money than we can ever give them. Um, we will have a good savings if we do it the weekend before, and that is June 25th. Mm -hmm. um, June or July? June 25th. It's the weekend before. Yeah. Um, because the price of his um, stuff he uses, the halls, the U halls, the, all the equipment is actually passed on to the bigger places. And if you do that before, we don't get charged for that. So we get more bang for a buck if we happen to do that on the 25th. Yeah, and I think we get better turnout for our local business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Competing with fewer and 
My only question, I know Evans Cattle Company has a big fireworks thing every year. Is there any way to coordinate? I don't know what I don't know what outfit they use, but is there mm -hmm. any way to coordinate and, and say they, they basically use American fireworks and oh, we have attempted oh. in the past two years to I guess the word is meld both together and they're not receptive. Well, I'm not saying to make theirs ours or ours theirs right. necessarily. Not have if they're bringing all their equipment on Friday, can they do ours on Sunday or, or whatever? I don't know if the conversation is happening. So sure. That's the only question. Mm -hmm. And I'm not privy to that to that contract date with them. I, I don't I don't know. So do you need a, a, a decision on a date today, or can it wait a little yeah. longer? Well, I need to start negotiating that because get locked Long in. Fine. 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 Maybe. Primarily, I think that uh, in talking with Brandy and hopefully the Parks and Rec will get in on this and take a big lead. Uh, as you all know, the two older gentlemen that uh, did the fireworks mm -hmm. uh, this past year, we did have some help. Mr. Woodwall come out. I think Brandy's mother come out. We did a lot of work that uh, helped us out. But I think uh, if Parks and Rec will take this over, do some of the work as far as the food trucks and some of the other things that are necessary to make this a go, uh, it would be a grand thing. Yeah, if you want baseball involved, 25th works best for us because we'll be done by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want a motion for it? Yeah. Mr. Lindsay? Uh, how much did the fireworks cost last year, including security? Uh, I don't, um, uh, under maybe eighteen five. I, I have the budget up. Oh, you do. So the the, the, the it's not. I just have the total of the budget. Your coffee and donuts, little bit that you did spend, and the fireworks came to fourteen thousand five hundred last year. Yeah, so I think we we did seventeen thousand last year. Do we pay for the deputies in here patrolling mm -hmm. that night? So we did it for fourteen, a little over fourteen thousand, you said. It was reduced last year, I think. Or oh, it had to be. If that's all that thing. Yeah, You're because for the, the deputies coffee and, and the and coffee everything. and donuts. I was thinking it was like eight, wasn't it? Well, I'll tell you right now, the so. donuts last year, is that year we got them from Bills? Or is that yes. we got them from so Bills? Was $12. We got yeah, that's the best six donut donuts. Or a so we, that coffee and donut, it was less than 100 bucks. Mm. So most of it was. Most of it was fireworks, but 17 is probably a good show. I think last year was a little bit shorter than the year we had before. And the year before we had the $17,000 show. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, I moved to have the city manager go forth with negotiations and the date. Uh, you look at uh, June 24th or the 25th? 25th. Mm -hmm. OK. With for the work show to be on the 25th. Rain out date of June 26th the next day because then we'll have to pay for them to go back and forth. Right. Uh, the, um, and apparently, uh, we got 20,000 already airmarked for it. Stay below the 20,000 or as cheap as you can get it. You're, you're an excellent negotiator. And, and in my opinion, I mean, whatever that means, uh, you've saved the city a lot of money over the last few years as manager. So I see no reason why you would not get the best deal, the best bang for a buck on this. So as long as it stays at 20 grand or less, I'm good with it. Thank uh, you. That isn't all the motions. <laughs> I hope not. Well, you get all that, Ms. Burns? Get all that. <laughs> so the motion is to set the date for the 25th, rain out of the 26th, and no more than 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. I got that. Second. Second by Mr. Vice. Second. <clears throat> Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? The two older members? Yes. Motion to pass is 6 I have another question if I may. Sure. If it's a okay, Mr. Ray. Sure. Uh, Mr. Cook said something about the Parks and Recs uh, uh, taking some of this over. The uh, would you be interested in doing the whole thing? 
Yes, uh, that's why I raised my hand. So at our last meeting, which was February 8th, we have basically kind of earmarked 4th of July as one of our main events. It's been mentioned to us in years past that, hey, we really want you guys to take this over. Um, we haven't started anything yet because we need to depend on a date. So once we have a date in that, we'll, I'll get with Mr. Cook so he knows the ins and outs of how, you know, what we've done in the past and get the ball rolling. So I guess my follow-up question to that, do you need anything from us to talk with Mr. Bridge about it and Mr. Cook? You need a motion or anything from us, Mr. Bridge? Mm -mm. Okay. No, no. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm good with it. I think if the Parks and Recs can take that over, because uh, it kind of falls under that category, I think. And uh, let's uh, see what they can do. Absolutely. I think it'll be awesome. I'll probably negotiate that to 17, so you have three to work with. I had a question. Um, that was the other thing I was going to mention. So our newest member, Mr. Bibney, has done an amazing job with um, starting to network for Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I believe, went today to the Rotary meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some, there's good interest in financial support for events. I don't know. We'll have to hash out mm -hmm. the details on how that works. But sure. Um, you know, so we can come up with a little extra money and do something bigger and better and by all means. Sure. Rotary is a service organization. Yeah, they would be interested mm -hmm. in what you have to say. Fantastic. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the city manager report under informational items. Um, Veterans Day banners program where I'm going to be starting, excuse me, that, excuse me, that program the first or second week of March. So there are a few more things I'm finaling, finalizing up, but just in case for those in attendance that don't know about it, we are starting a Veterans Banner program. So if you know of anyone that's served in the military that is a current past or former resident of the city or it comes to local, you can actually pay to get a banner done. It's going to be on our night on our, on our light poles on around certain holidays. So we'll have a sample up at the city building. It's a decent size. Um, so hopefully we get a lot of response from that. A lot of cities do that. What a great way to honor the veterans of, of our town. Um, moving on, last thing I got to discuss is Elizabeth Township contract. We did go over there. We did present them with the contract. Um, there is negotiations going back and forth, very little at this point in time. Uh, but we are mindful that that contract does expire here soon. Um, so I do have that in the back of the radar, but we haven't made too much progress on that. We will update council as, as, as the information comes to us. And we do have a medical billing issue. I wanted to discuss that tonight, but I'm still waiting on a little bit more information. Um, so I will have an update with that to council probably at the next meeting when I have all the uh, holes filled in. Don't want to give um, dotted information right now. Um, but as far as that goes, um, that looks like all the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. All right, council, any questions for the city manager? All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. We appreciate it. All right, moving on, we go to comments from members of the public. Uh, I had a couple of council members ask if we could break rules of council and move comp, because what's going to happen tonight is Mr. Bridge at the end, of, not the end, but after uh, after we go through these re these few resolutions, Mr. Bridge is going to give a report on the development, housing development, whatnot. So what I'd, I'd rather do so we don't start at one end and then go to the other and double up on questions, move comments of the public down to right next to his speaking part that way they go hand in hand so mr mayor i move that we break rules of council to move the comments from the members of the public right after item number 12 the uh, annexation <coughs> councilman lindsay yes councilman roadwald yes mayor lowry yes vice mayor grim yes councilman bond yes councilman cook yes that motion passes 6 0. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to resolutions. Okay. All right, our first one is resolution 2022 03 R. Introduction public hearing and action tonight. A resolution amending and adopting the new Carlisle City Council rules of council. Second. Who was the second? Who was the second? Uh, Mr. Roadwell. Okay. I'm sorry. And an explanation of this, this is a housekeeping uh, uh, ordinance that they do every year. 
Um, in addition to the charter that guides the city council, they also every year adopt what they call rules of council that set various things regarding their meetings, start time, the agenda layout, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what they have in front of them tonight is the approval of those for this particular year. Council, any questions or comments? Sir. Yes. When this first came up, I brought up um, uh, adjournment, the copy of rules of council that I had said that it was done with a motion and a second, but we've always, two years ago, we, we amended it to a motion, a second, and a majority vote. Does it still have a majority vote in there? Yeah, that's, yeah, the, yeah. Okay. That's what, that's why it was tabled last meeting, right? Yeah. To put mm -hmm. forth in. We had it added. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I didn't bring it with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should be all in there. So all the changes that were made. We also added executive session language in there. So you guys know what exactly you can and cannot go into executive session for. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sure. Anything else? That's it. Right. Ms. Berner, when you're ready, please. Okay. okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. <laughs> passes six to zero. We have resolution 2022-04R, introduction public hearing in action tonight. A resolution adopting a disaster recovery plan for the city of New Carlisle. Anyone? Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to adopt resolution 2022-04R. And an explanation of this resolution, we have already had a disaster recovery plan on file, and this is a financial disaster recovery plan, not a complete reoperation, so a tornado come through the city. Um, we get audited every year by the state of Ohio, and the existing plan we had just wasn't beefy enough, so they wanted us to add to that. So we looked at other cities, got comparables, and that's what is in front of us. That is what is in front of council tonight for approval, is just a beef up um, a disaster recovery plan for our financial services should our computer systems go down, we can't do business in the city building. Thank you, sir. Question, mm -hmm. uh, council, any questions, comments? Are you ready? All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Uh, we have resolution 2022-05R, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 22nd. No, that will probably be the next meeting. Oh, um, I put three. Um, oh, no, three, seven. March 7th, 2022. A resolution amending resolution 2021-15R, the capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose of adding capital purchases. Moving on to ordinances, we have ordinance 2022-04, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer vehicle for the director of public service. Council, I would like for this particular legislation piece to die for lack of motion. It is going to be replaced with ordinance 22-11. The reason we are requesting that to die is for two reasons. One is to line up with the other ordinances that supplement the actual spending of the money, but we also want to add $10,000 onto that purchase price because of the price of vehicles right now are so up in the air. We don't want his vehicle to come in at 36,000 and it was passed for 35. So it's really just a safety hold just to prevent any kind of coming back. Gotcha. Thank mm -hmm. you. And this was already approved in all the budgetary stuff we had done. Well, all right. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2022-05, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a new utility truck for the water department. Council. Motion by Mr. Cook. I didn't hear the second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. 
And the explanation of this uh, ordinance, this is um, I have a $20,000 spending limit, so anything over $20,000 uh, has to go in council for approval. Uh, this particular utility truck purchase for the water department has already been approved in the capital improvement plan for this year. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Mr. Uh, Mr. <laughs> what would this, uh, I guess this goes to Mr. Kitko. What would the van be used for? It's a box utility truck. Oh, it's a box? Mm -hmm, right. Yeah, this is a utility truck. Oh, it says van here. It's a utility truck. It's tomato, 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 utility mm -hmm. truck, van. Same difference. No, that's what we're using is the van. He's purchasing the truck. Yep. Okay. All right, that's it, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Mm, yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That motion passes 6-0. <coughs> on to Ordinance 2022-06, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer aerial platform bucket truck for the Public Works and Parks Department. Council. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Robo. And an explanation of this, again, it's over the monetary amount to spend, which is $20,000. This is a new platform bucket truck for the uh, Public Works and Parks Department. And again, this is already being approved in the 2022 CIP. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, any discussion? You're all right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. That motion passes 6-0. Moving on to Ordinance 2022-07, an ordinance amending the official zoning map of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to rezone a parcel of land from OA Office Apartment to CB Central Business. Move to accept. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Bond. <clears throat> and an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this um, has been presented to council before uh, in the form of just the notification for the uh, safe and sound outfitters coming in. Mm -hmm. And this is just really the, uh, the official movement of that, changing of it. Mm -hmm. Discussion, council? Are you ready? All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That motion passes 6-0. We have ordinance 2022-08, an ordinance amending and replacing a certain section of chapter 278 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the Parks and Recreation Board bylaws. Council. Mr. Mayor. Uh, he Mr. Said so moved, he, you know, somebody said it. Mr. Lindsay, go ahead. I move we accept ordinance 2022-08. Second. <coughs> and an explanation, oh, yeah, explanation of this ordinance. Um, so the Parks and Rec Board is an extension of council, uh, but they also have to uh, pass their own bylaws, and they did that when they did uh, uh, begin in 2018. But there are amendments, and the amendments have to be approved by council via ordinance. Thank you, sir. Council, any discussion? Highlighted in yellow the changes, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Hey, okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. That motion passes 6-0. And moving on to Ordinance 2022-09, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 7th, 2022. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-44. Ordinance 2022-10, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 7th, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to submit consent to the Ohio Department of Transportation for a resurfacing project located within the city of New Carlisle. Ordinance 2022-11, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 7th, 2022. 
an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer vehicle for the Director of Public Service. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ms. Burner. All right, moving on to other business. So next we'll head into uh, Miami County Residential Development Annexation in the City of New Carlisle. And this is an early discussion. Mr. Bridge has put some information together for us. And then, like I said, after he gives his report, we'll go into uh, comments from the public. So, Mr. Bridge, I hand it over to you, sir. Thank you. Let me get situated here. Stand up so everyone can see. Yeah, right, sure. sir. Like to uh, All right, first off, thanks to everyone for coming. We very rarely see this packed up a house when we have these council meetings. So anytime we can get public involvement, it's the way to go. It's your town. We love to hear your voices. But what we have in front of us today, I know it got leaked on Facebook that the city is entertaining an annexation from Miami County. Um, it's true, but it's also very early in the stages. Okay, right now, this is a project Miami County is doing. It really has no immediate, I can't say immediate impact on us, but there's no formal impact on us just yet. They haven't even started the annexation process with Miami County yet. Once they do that, they, the petitioner, who is the guy who bought the farm and is the developer, and I do have a little map here to share with everyone with information, it is just a conceptual plan. So anything that you've seen on Facebook, it probably is legit, but it is a conceptual plan. What that means is it could change. It's going to have to go through a lot of processes here at the city level before it's even be able to go forward. So once I, I stated earlier, there's an annexation petition that has to go on. So that developer who bought that farm, the farm, the, the, the guy who owned the farm ended up selling it to a, a developer. Developer bought that. Once that developer owns it, he is a sole property owner. So he's probably going to do a type two expedited an annexation. In the state of Ohio, it's just one property owner. That's him. Once he has that petition done, he files that with Miami County. Once he files that with Miami County, he has to notify the city of New Carlisle his intent to annex annex into the city. Within 20 days, we have to go to council and get a uh, letter of services passed, whether an ordinance or resolution that states these are the services that we can provide. Street, fire, public service, stuff like that. And that's still stuff I'm kind of working on in the back end. So what we've seen from Facebook is, a, is this got leaked, and it, 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 and it did. But we were scheduled to talk about this tonight with council, regardless of that was going to go down. But when I say it's in the very early stages, it is very early. Like, a, like I said, they still have to go through the Miami County process, then it comes to New Carlisle. So this conceptual plan that we saw very well could change. It could be bigger homes on bigger lots. It could be smaller homes on smaller lots. We don't know until they have a final plan come through. And that has to go, and those are called residential plan unit developments, our PUDs. We have safeguards in our own codes that say, if you do this, it has to go through our planning board. Our planning board will have that final say in whatever site plan that they develop and bring into the city. So that is how that's going to go down. So we also thought this would be the perfect opportunity to let the citizens of New Carlisle know that not only are we working on this one, but we're actually working on two more with the possibility of three more residential developments into this city. So when we look, how we do our job on this side of the table is every year, or every time a council's set, they look at some policy. We have a land use policy that states to grow the city, we are to go after these type of developments. What we have here, these are called residential plan unit developments. Most of the time they go off great. We always have our outliers. I know there's some chatter about carriage hills or carriage trails. I don't know anything about that. I know probably it went south. We had our own issue with that with Twain Creeks back in the day when the housing, right before the housing market failed. Very rarely do these things fall by the wayside. There's so many checks and balances in place for these to go and be a beneficial harmony thing for everyone involved. But we are always intrigued at and interested in growing our tax base. We're not going to grow as a city if we don't grow our tax base. What we know, get back to Miami County development, what we know at this point in time is it is approximately 115 acres. It is DDC management who is the developer. It's around 293 residential lots. There is no indication that any of it's gonna be low income housing. We have not heard a word of that. The only thing that we heard potentially it could be there is a slither of farmland that's um, right 
west of the existing senior facility. So they had asked us, where is it lack? We need affordable senior housing. So they may look at that one again, concept of looking at instead of making that residential, they might have another community, senior community like they do across street. Again, conceptual plan. We don't know what the final is going to be until they present it to the planning board. We don't even know when that's going to be. Until they file that annexation position, we don't know when it's going to be. Um, what we do know is that right now, uh, the home prices will start at 250 and above. So that's, no, that's not qualified as low income. It's actually a really healthy housing stock to have for people to move up to, you know, starter homes into these, you know, a little bit bigger homes. So again, it, it's only an annexation discussion so far. Again, stress, no filing has been made. We have not heard from Miami County uh, that they have officially put the position in. We know it's going to happen because he bought the land. The developer bought the land. So we, we, we know he's going to petition for the annexation. We just don't know when. Um, and another thing too is this is a multi-year project. We do know that they had said that they intend to break ground in 2023 with the intention of building the lots in 2024. But that's going to take five to eight years for that even to realize its own potential. So I know there's been chatter around Facebook about the city not being able to handle the growth, which is not true at all. Um, we will phase that out. We will hire people to help us make those decisions. Um, our water plant's ready to go. We do need to do some beefing up at our wastewater plant. But as far as the city not having the resources or the means to handle this growth, that's simply just not true. Uh, we will, and we currently do. So speaking of the other two developments, um, right now we have, we're working with an engineer um, to annex another annexation, but this is from Clark County and to the city. Um, this is approximately 83 acres of land. This is just north of the New Carlisle Elementary School. Um, Structure Point is an engineering firm. Um, again, and Ann Arbor, Arbor Homes is the home builder. So here's the difference between these two first I described. The Miami County one is just a developer. They do not even have a home builder yet. The one north of the school, they have a developer and they also have a home builder. So that's, I don't know as, as far as timing, how that's going to play out, uh, but they have started the process. We are in the middle of doing a traffic study for this particular uh, development. We do not have any concept plans for this particular one north of the school. They have not supplied that with us yet. So as soon as they give that to us, we'll gladly share that with council. The third one is right off 235. It is approximately 145 acres of land situated in the city of New Carlisle, so there's no annexation, no it's all in the city what's uh, to begin with. We have been in contact with a, with a potential developer. We could not get a hold of, the, hold of that developer today to share his name with you, so once we get with that, we'll, we'll let council know. Um, but that land acquisition, I think, is starting, um, and I think it has been completed, but I don't think the transfer is going to take place after the, at the end of this year. Where's that one at? That is on 235. I heard that part. Yeah, across from about across from Van Crest in that area right there. There's a big film. Uh, film, I think, is that where the um, church sign is? Is that a little south of it? Well, the, yeah, the church has a property there. Sure. It's not included in the church. Gotcha. It's everything else. I passed the car dealership. Yeah. Um, so again, no concepts, no formal applications have been submitted to the city for this. So everyone's asking, why New Carlisle? Why not? I became the city manager here. I actually started as a planning director in 2012. I told everyone then the city's got a, a lot of potential. So the benefit of growing your city is it alleviates tax burden on the existing population. So let's just say that none of these developments were coming in. Well, the income tax is 1.5%. So we like to add to that because it takes the burden off. Because if not, we our service costs are still going up. We're still going to provide services, but now we don't have as many people contributing to that tax base. So when you have these sort of developments that are healthy for the city. But how this started was New Carlisle was named the second healthiest housing market in the state of Ohio. And I think that just spurred a lot of attention onto us. But we are very close to 70. We are very close to the Air Force Base. And we have that small time fill with being close to some major municipal, municipal uh, areas, Springfield, Dayton, Columbus. So we do have that attraction from that standpoint. Um, ultimately, it'll be council's decision if they pass these annex annexation agreements, if the planning board passes these comp plan, I mean the uh, site plans, um, it will be back to them. But I think everyone has an interest, and I could be wrong about growing the city and seeing realizing its full potential. 
but we're not going to get business in this town until we increase the rooftops, until we have disposable income. Right now, the average income in the city of New Carlisle is just under 40000 That's not a lot of disposable income. So when you're a McDonald's or you're an Arby's or you're a, you know, a manufacturer, you look at that. You look at how much disposable income does this community have. If I build a McDonald's, are they going to have extra money to spend there? If I build a manufacturing hub, how far are these people going to have to drive to get to work? Well, while they're at work, where are they going to go eat? How are the roads? How is the structure? How are the amenities? So they look at all that stuff. So one of the things that we've done on this side of the table is we've increased the city's bond rating, which since I've taken for tri tri triple B plus, triple B plus. In our world, that means lower rates, better credit options. So all the work that we've done has led us to where we're at. But they have come to us. So we are, we're doing something right here. To have this sort of growth is great. To have three, potentially four, in a matter of, you know, short amount of time is awesome. There are, there are some questions, there are some concerns. You guys have every right to voice those concerns to the people who you had elected to, to guide you for this endeavor. Um, but again, this is a process that will take five to eight years for it to see its potential. It's not going to be, yeah, they're going to prove it, and then tomorrow we're going to have 400 homes, 400 homes in our backyard. It just doesn't work like that. It's not your backyard. It's in my front yard. You're not going to have to deal with it. Hang on, guys. Okay, first off, sir. Sir. Gotta stop. Okay, hang on. I'm, I'm just giving the information. But you're taking the country road, and we're going to shove 600 cars now. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm doing my job and looking out for the side of Guys, sure. please stop. It's not your backyard, it's in our backyard. Sir, please stop. Gosh. Stop. We'll get to public comments in just a moment. Okay. You good, Mr. Bridge? Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. All right. So now, how this will work is, does anybody that doesn't have any comments about this, is anybody fear for any reason? We'll get that out of the way. So, okay. We'll, we'll do these two, and then we can focus on the main one. Okay. And for the... For the comments uh, from the public, you need your name, address, and to keep it to five minutes, please. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. I brought this up at the last meeting, but Howie wasn't here. But Howie's here now. <laughs> <laughs> the curve on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Something has to be done. Whether you move the lit up sign for the speed limit saying you're going this fast, to where it goes to 25, put lights on that curve sign. Something has to be done. It was brought up to possibly put a guardrail there. You can't put a guardrail there because you blocked them off two businesses and a driveway. Well, the first thing I'll do is look at the uniform code standards for traffic control uh, devices. Next thing I'll do is probably look into getting a consultant because anything you do with um, changing the speed, the um, barriers, uh, whatever you change, you have to follow liability guidelines. You know, if you put something in, is it a liability because you put it in? Guardrail sounds safe. They'll bounce off of it, probably stay away. Uh, depends on where that guardrail ramp needs to start. Could actually uh, be a potential hazard where they'll ride that ramp onto the guardrail and into a home. So things like that will have to be taken into consideration, but I'll probably get a consultant like we've done before. They'll come in, they'll do uh, traffic crashes, um, they'll do maybe um, traffic ca crashes where it wasn't reported or it was just an informational. Um, they'll look at different devices. Um, they'll look at uh, basically anything that could be used as data to see if there's something that could be put there, what should be put there, and should the speed be adjusted a little bit down. Uh, they'll look at all those. But okay. that, it will take a little bit of time to get through that whole scenario because whatever we put in, again, our liability will have to cover that and say if someone gets in a crash, they won't hold the city liable because they, we done due diligence to make sure it was corrected properly. Okay. I just, something needs to be done. I mean, I got lucky and I don't want to have to go through that again. Thank you, Ms. Hagelson. Ma'am, oh, you go. There was another one. My name is Jenny Stump. I live at 524 North Church Street. During a conversation, I had heard about the the second shelter house that's going to be built and I understand it's the plan is for it to go over here 
and use the rest of the flat open space here for parking, et cetera. I kind of have a bit of an issue with it. For starters, Smith Park is not a large park to begin with. It's a, I mean, as parks go in cities, this is not a real big park. And there's not a lot of usable open space in this park. There's a lot of trees. You've got the gully that goes through here. Granted, you've got the stage down there. You've got the tennis courts over there, the open shelter house, play equipment, shelter house here. Granted, there's hardly any parking for this shelter house, let alone a second one. Does anybody actually use this park? I mean, I use it all the time with my son and my grandkids. <coughs> We use this flat area over here because that's the only open flat area in this park that you could play flag football or soccer or tag or, you know, stuff like that. The rest of the park doesn't really have that kind of area. This is really the only flat open area to play games and stuff like that on. I don't, I don't have, personally, I don't have a, an alternative suggestion. I just heard about this. I'm just thinking maybe it should be revisited and maybe kind of see if there are any other options available as far as placement. Because I know it's not, it's a grant, so I know it's not going to cost the city to build the shelter house, I understand. But I'm just a little concerned about the placement of it. That it's, it makes, to me, it would, it would take away from what makes Smith Park, Smith Park, to me, personally. Because there is open space to play in for kids to be here. And kids use this park a lot. Um, I, you know, I just wanted to have, have my two cents worth in. I guess that you know maybe it could be revisited as as other potential options that a new shelter house could be placed. I understand the need for it, and, and granted, this one makes money. Another one that would make money too. I understand that. It's just the placement I have a question about. So I just wanted to put a bug in somebody's ear and see if anything. Could be addressed or something. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Does that does that grant lock us into the location which we put in? Yeah, does it? Uh, we put so much work into going to council and determine a location. And, and I mean, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. I think I see how he, we're not going to lose all the green space between the two. I mean, not no. I think the goal was to tuck this one back, back. in the woods a little bit. Yeah. Uh, also back in the corner, corner, so a lot of that green space will how, still remain. How big is the shelter? It's about, about this size, about the same mm -hmm. size and we're, it's going to have its own parking. And the reason we like it coming off this <coughs> side is because there's already a curb cut on Washington here. Yeah. So we're going to have the driveway come up. It's going to come in, well, curve around. Well, there's a driveway right there yeah. on Washington. Yeah, right, and now. it's going to curve and come back here. So yeah. primarily, right. a lot of that stuff will still be out there. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, because I got to thinking about that. It's like, sure. for as, as many cars end up here sometimes, mm -hmm. it won't be as same principle if you've got cars <coughs> rented out. You know, it does, like I said, you know, Smith Park isn't that huge sure. to begin with. Yep. And I, I was just concerned about losing some of the ambiance, for lack of a better word. When, when they were here, like, like we, we specifically wanted some of that to be reserved for that particular, okay. that same exact issue. I mean, we haven't, we haven't seen any engineering plans on that yet. So once we see that, we'll know exactly where it's going to be. Right. And make that determination from there but we've had a lot of meetings on that particular thing and we're so far into the the, the, the grants already been awarded yeah. so i don't want to jeopardize well, I have it no yeah. idea how that works mm -hmm. so, um, you know. yeah very valid concerns yeah sure thank you mr Tom. appreciate it ma'am more yellow in case i got unruly it'd be easier for Deputy McDuffie to find me. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, Brandy Mullet, 522 Hamilton Avenue. Um, this is kind of an unofficial. Um, unfortunately, our next parks meeting is not until the 8th, which is the day after the council meeting. I'm going to reach out to parks board members and see if they are okay with me going ahead and presenting an official, but I just want to let you guys know 
we are rocking and rolling. We've got great ideas. Um, like I said, Mr. Mooney has been an excellent addition. Um, we have almost, and I'm glad everybody's here tonight because you get to hear all this good stuff. Um, we have almost completely finalized our plans for the Easter egg hunt. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And actually, I'm glad that I went after you because um, this is near and dear to my heart. It's kind of a diamond in the rough. Mr. Hutchinson and I have talked about this um, a little bit. If you're looking for an excellent green space, it's not the easiest accessible. That's what one of the things that I want to work on. But if you go down to the end of Washington and take a right, not on the bike path, you can go up to what is called Brubaker Park. Yeah. Wide open, green space. Ultimately, um, like I said, it's kind of like my little passion project. Um, I want to try to, you know, make that into something usable, not, I don't mean usable in terms of like putting a playground equipment thing there or putting structures um, per se, just turning, you know, clearing out some of that brush, maybe making it accessible from the bike path. Um, and I think that if we can get that accomplished, it may not be this year. Um, but I think that would help maybe offset some of the loss of green space. Um, because I, I mean, I see people, I live right over here. So I see people all the time. They're always over here with kids running around, playing ball, you know, dogs walking, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we've got plans in the works. Um, like I said, I will get with the other members of the parks board and see if they're okay with it. And we'll put together a, uh, an official, Parks Committee report um, that I will email to Mr. Bridge and we can get it out to you guys for a review. Awesome, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, anyone else next up or anything else you guys would like to discuss? Name, address, try to keep it to five minutes, please. Is this for annexation comments or? It's it for anything, but yeah, I think we, I think we got past the other general stuff. So yeah, if you guys have the annexation, just like I said, name, address, and then try to keep it to five minutes. Uh, my name is Jason Layton, 8115 East New Carlisle Road. Uh, you can call me Julian Assange because I am the ball. I'm the one that put it out on Facebook. Um, the issue I have with what you had said about it was leaked. Um, secrets are typically leaked. Mm -hmm. There's enough people in this town um, in official positions that knew about this and were openly talking about it, that's not a leak. That's just information. Okay, thank you. So I don't mean to be disrespectful. Sure, it's, just, that's, do, sure. it's, it's out there enough that, mm -hmm. and it kind of irritates me that it was meant to be hush-hush. I understand there's some reasons why, but when it directly affects me, her, 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 those two, him, you guys, it's it's hurtful it is it's you know this is going to change my community on the other side of that line um so bethel has been under attack i'm gonna i'm gonna read this because i'm just gonna be all over the place uh council mayor thank you for your time my name is jason layton i live a mile i live one half mile west on new carlisle road from the proposed development uh, that's our Clark family farm. My grandfather bought the farm in 1973. I grew up on that farm. I left at 18. I boomeranged back in my early 30s after coming to my senses. Uh, because during my time away, I've lived in close quarter, cookie cutter neighborhoods, and now I want no part of it. Until recent years, the borders of Bethel Township have, been, have protected mine and thousands of other Bethel residents' ways of life. This is now under attack on our southern border as Huber Heights and Cares Trails continues to buy, build, and annex our farmland. No one wants to infringe on the rights of a landowner to sell his or her land, but when that buyer wants to stroll in and erect a neighborhood, they and you will be met with resistance. We will fight against this annexation and for our way of life. Additionally, we have sent public, we have sent for public record, we have sent public record requests 
to Miami County, New Crow Isle, and Bethel Township for any and all information pertaining to this matter, all the way down to emails and text messages. We understand this is all in the very early stages and you may not have the answers for the following items, but here are five key questions and concerns for your consideration. So we understand, like you reiterated, that nobody knows much of anything yet. We understand this is, my understanding, this has been in the works for about a year at the county level between the landowner and the, the buyer and at Miami County, them going, you know, mm -hmm. above our pay grade, right? So, one, child occupancy of this new neighborhood. Will the children of that development be Bethel or Tecumseh students? This could add up to 600 more students to one of our local schools. Bethel's overpopulation is already a disaster, 100%. My kids go there, they're my fifth grade boys in trailers out back. This, this is more of a permanent type trailer. They've actually got concrete sidewalks, walkways, rails, things like that. Before, they're in single wides in the front yard because our last administration, I'm not gonna cuss, they ruined us. They knew tra Cares Trails was coming. Our superintendent, who we got rid of, went ahead with a, an under, uh, an undersized build, an add-on to our school and now we just broke ground on new sports complex and it's gonna be, was supposed to be building, and now it's gonna be buildings because we've just doubled in size. I graduated there 20, ugh, two years ago with 65 people in my class. Now my son's class in fifth grade is 130 or 40 people. So I mean, it's, it's exploded. We don't have the room for it. We're in the middle of the building. If those kids go to Bethel, it's going to make it worse. We have teachers, we have kids sitting on floors in classrooms. We have teachers without classrooms. They have a cart that they push around to find open spaces. That's, that's anyway, I, I, I will interrupt you and say we have, what we have been told is those kids would go to Bethel. Yeah. Okay. So, um, number two is environmental impact. The northern border of that, develop, of, of that development is adjacent to our beloved Silver Lake property. Uh, which is a part of a natural wetland network. This land must not be jeopardized because of this development. Number three is a traffic impact study. I assume that's a normal thing for you slap in a neighborhood, you gotta get a, a gauge for what it's gonna do. Yeah, we're working on right now. Oh, I mean, I'm asking, is that a normal part of it a- It depends on the size of the development. Okay. That, I implore you, has to be done. Because figure two cars per house. That's a lot of cars, boom. I mean, it's gonna be over time, whatever, but mm -hmm. that's gonna be heavy, heavy additional traffic. Um, number four, stormwater management. You know, that's something you guys are gonna have to assess. And, you know, upgrades, things are gonna be able to be mm -hmm. uh, added into. Uh, the last thing, what's that? I know where the water goes right now. Are, that field, right over in my are you across the street? Yeah. With yeah, the ponds? Their house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I knew that because that's a known fact. That, you know, that, that all slopes up. It's already going across there, you know. I would so, say it's probably going to be alleviated then if you're having water run off from that. It's going to be collected and dispersed somewhere else. <laughs> you're still, you're still not allowed to be okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number well, five. Am I going to be in this? It still stays in Miami County. Yeah, it stays from what well, I've gathered. Higher taxes than the guy across the street. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, no, we're lower. No, I mean, we're. It's only if you're building in that development. If you're across the street, you're still in Miami County. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned. You're I've not heard, subject to. The guy across the street in Clark County is going to pay less. No, he's not. He's going to no, pay he's Miami he's County taxes. Plus, he's going to, he's going to pay City of New Carlisle income tax. Hey, Randy. Point five percent. Yeah. Let's let him. Let's let him uh, last thing is, um, are there going to be any tax abatements or incentives to make the development? We, we don't know yet. Okay. So, I can send a copy of this. Just the the five items. Um, and I put on here, I didn't know that you were gonna go over some things. So uh, basically we know you're not gonna be able to hit all these right now. So if I can send this to you, and as you're able to get answers, to feed them back to us. 
Um, we would just encourage you to keep abreast to the council meetings okay. and then kind of fill in the blanks with that. Um, as the information comes to us, we'll be happy to share it probably with council so it would be known. But a lot of your concerns would be should be addressed with Bethel and Miami County first. Um, and then, like I said, once that petition is hit with Miami County, then that's going to start our end. So until we get that petition even from Miami County, because you don't know, he may back, it, it could fall through. You, you never Right. Well, and I felt uh, better before I got here, because once she stood up and said that the deal's already gone through. Yeah, we were under the impression that, and this is out of the landowner's they mouth. Didn't spend all that money for it not to go. Well, through. well, that it was that it was. We'd heard from the landowner property. just the other day that it was there was a contract, mm -hmm. and I assume that meant that, um, hey, I want to buy your land as long as I can go talk to these guys and things are going to be okay. Then I'll buy it and all that. So, back in my mind, and everybody, you know, we're hoping this thing falls through, mm -hmm. and that land gets sold to a farmer. And or Evans Cattle well. walks in and he's like, you know what, we want it. And that stays, and that's I don't why care we're just saying if there's cows, because sold. my mom right here rents that land right now. Sure. And she has her cattle business on it. It's gone. The land we have on our farm will not sustain the number of cattle she has, which means hopefully she can find elsewhere. But if you take away that, and it's not, that's not the landowner's problem or anybody else. If he sold it to anybody else and they say, we don't want you to rent, there was still a farm. That's, you know, I'm just saying this is a, a direct hit. So it hits a little closer to home that, you know, her business is, is literally going to be cut in half until we find other means to. But that's not the landowner's fault. You know, if he wants to sell stuff, he can. So, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. So it just hits kind of close to home. So. Sure. All right, thank you, sir. All right, anyone, anyone else? Name and, name and address. Good evening, my name is Jeff Morford. 6570 each walnut. Did you get that? I'll probably not. That's all right. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to have that other guy. I'm here this evening with my daughter, Dana, my nephew, David. We are three parts of 45 plus member family from one year old to 80 years old. We own a property at 4720 South Scarf Road, also known as Silver Lake. This family is fortunate to be designated the stewards of this property to look after its health and well-being. I know everything is tentative now. Nothing's guaranteed other than I didn't realize also that this property has been sold. You know, the, the annexation property. Just for information, so I'm, I'm sure when the uh, developer comes in, he's going to give you all this information about what he's going to do, when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it, and you're going to take that into consideration to make decisions. Just for general information, I'm going to tell you about the property. Silver Lakes is approximately 100 acres. I won't give you specific numbers, but 17 acres of that is a lake. Silver Lake is one of less than 120 naturally formed lakes in Ohio. There's a lot of other waterways, but they're dammed up, reservoirs, dug up, whatever you want to call it. This means 10,000 years ago, a glacier stopped right there. It's an important fact. The natural habitat is home to plants, animals, fish, birds, crayfish, dragonflies, etc. that could be on the Ohio endangered, threatened species, or concerned lists. I've been there 50 years, and last year, the first time I saw a bald eagle fishing there. Two years ago, there was a family of peregrine falcons nesting there and raising their families there. First time I've seen it. Over the years, over and above the normal squirrels, rabbits, deer, raccoons, skunks, I have seen red fox, gray fox, herons, kingfishers, pileated woodpeckers, hummingbirds, coyotes, turkeys, not on a daily basis, but over the, over the past. We've had the University of Cincinnati there and the University of Dayton on the property a number of times with their professors and students as a project. 
it has been pointed out to us that we have the Iowa darter, which is a small fish in the lake, which is on the Ohio species of concern list. We also have the Kirkland's water snake, which is on the Ohio threatened species list. I'm not a naturalist, but I'm sure if a trained naturalist would look around that property, who knows a variety of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, crayfish, dragflies, they might find. I'm going to change page. But they might find on a 10,000 year old piece of property in the lake, specifically, which might be on the Ohio Endangered Threatened Species of Concern Act. There's three levels on that. We are concerned if this project goes through that the property and its environment will be in jeopardy with construction, water runoff, 300 houses, people, cars, and increased traffic. I'm sure the first bulldozer that pulls onto that property, all these animals that are there, if they've got a chance, they're out the door. We'd like the landowners, and I'm gonna to have to change that because we're no longer talking about the, the land not being sold. It's already sold. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that's what I heard. I'm only heard, heard that. But we'd like the landowners, developers, builders, and the city of New Carlisle to cancel that project. Mm -hmm. If not, we would like the city council to vote not to supply services to the project. You have to vote to, to supply them services. Water and sewage obviously being the main one. Right. It is not our, if not, our family will look at other options. I do not know what the options are because this is all brand new to us. Four days ago, I think I heard about it. But Silver Lake supporters have been suggesting actions we can take, people and associations we can contact to help us. There's a lot going on. I know you're looking for advancement in the community and stuff like that. But you have to look at the price of things. Are you willing to sacrifice something that's 10,000 years old? Mm -hmm. and, and the animals and this, you know, everything going on and the way of life, you know. It, it's, it's a unique place. It can't be replaced. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. I don't want to see it happen. I'm hoping that you don't want to see it happen. I'd like to think that there might be a few people in here that have been to the lake and understand the, the, the real love of that lake and what it's offered. It's been in this community for, again, 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. It was the swimming hole of this community. I mean, this before, I mean, back in the 20s and 30s stuff, before Kings Island was here and Band Camp was here and all this other stuff, people would go to that property for their entertainment, let's call it. We've got pictures of when, before Rio refrigeration, we've got pictures of people coming to the lake, pulling ice out of the lake to be stored in uh, the middle of New Carlisle for refrigeration purposes. So it's been a historical part of this community. And I don't want to lose it. I don't think there's many people that want to see it go. So we're going to need some help from you guys. I'm looking to you to help me out of this thing. And I know you want to, you know, you're looking to advance the community and everything else. But we, we've had people, uh, friends have notified us that they're willing to help physically, monetarily, legally, environmentally, whatever it's going to take. So again, I hope that you just cancel it out and uh, proceed on maybe this other project up north or north what, east or whatever it is. But you're gonna have some uh, questions coming even. Cause like I say, I don't even know what we're gonna do. I don't know what, like I say, everything's soft right now. There's no firm answers that you guys are getting. But I just wanna give you our side of the story a little bit. Cause I know the, uh, the developer is going to give you his side, and he's going to paint a nice rosy picture for you. I don't know if there's been an environmental impact study about that property, that he even knows Silver Lake's over there. I'm sure he does, but I don't think he realizes the history behind it, or he might think I dug it with my pitchfork and shovel or something like that. 
I don't think he realized the scope of the importance of that piece of property is. And the runoff from it, and the traffic, people, you know, in general, you know. So I appreciate your time. Hey, Hopefully I'll be back. Yeah, no, nah, I wasn't in on that one. You don't want to? No, I didn't know anything about that one. Exactly, because I don't think it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not it. All right, guys, let's keep moving. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your Any trip. questions? Not at this time. You know, as you're asking. I have one. Yeah, I got one. Um, okay. You have to speak up. I'm a little hard here. From the new Carlisle, because we're annexed, but uh, how many of you guys have gone to? The, the Bethel Township meetings or Miami County because um, this is where this all starts. It doesn't start with New Carlisle. New Carlisle is just the end of it. Miami County and Bethel Township are the ones. Uh, as for the gentleman with Bethel, that's a Bethel problem. You know, you got, they, Bethel knew that school was not going to be able to occupy those students well before that broke ground. Oh, yeah. No, this um, is not on you. This, you know, the addition uh, will not help. I am not saying it won't. It won't help Bethel. It, was, it will help New Carlisle. It was really planned and that wasn't gone. But to add on to the problem, too, you know, I don't want to say, well, we're going to screw another six, eight hundred kids back. But the new kids. Well, and that's, and that's, no it, that's not my That's not my call. Right, right. Um, but I don't, hear, I don't want to hear, you know, well, it's a Bethel problem. Well, I'm just saying, but. but not quite like that. You know, I think we just heard, I heard the initial that by building new schools, but it's, it's just an ongoing problem that, you know, if we keep popping up the buildings in the middle of cornfield and slap well, Did anybody go to the meeting, the Miami County meeting last night? Well, I went to it last night. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. All right, thank you very much, sir. Anybody else next with another well, question? I <laughs> it's all just broke then as well. I got one other thing. Like, say, you're, you're trying to get feedback from us, we're trying to get feedback from you. I don't think the developer realizes what's going on. You need to, you know, you're the communication between them and us. So if he has questions that he's gonna ask you, you can call us right. and where we're going, how we're going, when we're gonna do something. Starts at Bethel. Thank you. Thank you. Marianne Layton, 8085 East New Carlisle Road. Yeah. I'm if sorry, what was your address, ma'am? Pardon? What was your address? 8085 East New Carlisle Road. If you already have development starting north of town, 600 homes, and then you talked about a second one and possibly a third one, why would you allow, okay, first of all, let me backtrack. Miami County, we keep hearing, cannot stop this. We can't, there isn't any, they tell us there isn't anything we could do to stop it. Because once they annex it, they take our, all of our rights away. Our property size goes out the door, you know, everything. And all those students will come into Bethel School. But yet it'll be Duke Carlisle. And isn't uh, uh, taxes, I don't know if it's taxes or what, or d Bethel won't get anything for 20 years? Like Huber Heights? I have no clue. Yeah, 20 years before we get any money. Well, that's, that's because probably they have the city of Huber Heights struck a deal with that development. It's probably a tip, which mm -hmm. is taxing. And we're fighting everything. it again. So yeah, and there's a, there's a shoddy deal. So our land use plan st specifically states that it is 100% developer cost. So there, the city would lose no tax revenue. I mean, they're going to pay for that out of their pocket. Now, as far as this particular thing, not have, that would not be a Miami County decision. They could do that for property. Let me, okay. let, me, let me back up. They could do that for their property. But for them to get any sort of income tax abatement would have to go through our council. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you've got this development starting north. All these kids are going to go to Tecumseh. I understand that Tecumseh School Board didn't know. They do now. Why do you want to come into Bethel Township? It's not very good neighbors. <laughs> Little New Carlisle Road with what, two cars per household traveling? A third of them going Scar, a third of them going Dayton Brandt, 
or New Carlisle Road and third coming into New Carlisle. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, I hear that it's going to be good for New Carlisle. Well, guess what? It's not very good for Bethel Township at all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, hi, my name's Rose McCormick. I live at 910 Scarf Road. Don't here in name, please. Rose McCormick. Thank you. 910 Scarf Road. Have you guys already made your decision? That's all I want to know. No, because we don't have enough. Is this is this worth our time to be here to speak how we feel? Because you guys have already made your mind up. I live in 910 Scarf Road. Me and my husband bought that house uh, 30 something years ago. We bought that house for that very reason, that field, because of the beauty. We get the best of both worlds. We're in the city, but yet we get to see the beauty of the land. You want to talk about New Carlisle and the beauty? That's what makes us special because of our farmland. We don't need more houses and more houses and more houses. I understand the revenue part. I get what you're talking about, the taxes. And all, but I want to know how that does affect me tax-wise living at 910 Scarf Road when that's across the street from me. Are my taxes going to go up? Because obviously if there's new homes put up, typically it's going to probably trickle down to us at some point. And I don't want to move because we've lived there and we own our home. And that's my home and I want to stay there. The beauty of that is going to be gone, and I know this isn't going to take, it won't happen overnight, I get that. But I look forward to living there to my last days to look at that. That is what makes New Carlisle beautiful, it is it's a small town, it is it's the, the, the farmland. I don't know how anyone else feels, but that's how I feel. So I hate to see that go. It's the beauty, and it's just the, you know, just the way I feel, just think you know, from the heart before you make any major decision that's just going to disrupt a lot of lives. And it will. I, I'm not looking forward to having more traffic down my road. I'm not looking forward to all that and maybe even crime coming with it. I mean, you, people don't even think about that. I mean, it, there's a lot of things to think about here. But I just hope that just look at it and just say, you know, really do we want to start, you know, like she said, I don't know where this, that you guys are talking about, this build up north of town, whatever, whatever fine, but at least in that, because we live on that road and it will affect us. I mean, I don't know where you folks live and that's your business, but it's going to affect me and my husband and the rest of us that live on that road that may not speak. Um, and I'm not looking forward to something like that. That was, that's where I, I, I love the fact that look at, and like he said, the gentleman said about the eagles, we lived there 30 something years, and I'll tell you, like two years ago was the first time I seen two eagles in that field. You know how happy I was to see that? I was excited, I'm like, eagles, I mean, this was awesome. And the deer, I mean, I love seeing the wildlife. Look at the humanist, human part of this too. I know it's a business, I get that, it's money, I get that, money, money. But there's human side to this too. And they'll take that from us if they do this. And I want to live there when it's beautiful. I don't want to see the back of someone's cookie cutter house. I get up every morning. I've, we've seen this for 30 some years. And to take that away, I mean, that bothers me. I can't speak for the rest of us. And like I said, it's probably going to affect us somewhere down the line tax wise, you know, too. And I, I'm not looking forward to that either. You know, somewhere along the line, something's going to get slammed on us, I know, because that's the way things are. I'm not looking forward to that. I really love my home. I want to stay there. And I just hope that you guys can think about people and how it really affects them personally. And it sounds like it's affected people that have lived, you know, that got land and so forth. They, you know, that's our lives we're talking about. And I just don't want to see that taken away just because we want to put up a development. It, it's not worth, to me, it's not a trade off. The beauty of the land, the beauty of our, our, you know, our little town, that's what makes us beautiful, is the little country. The little country roads, you got a little farmland here or there. I don't want to see cookie cutter houses on every corner or every part of land, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps or if it matters or if it's just a waste of your time and my time, but I just want you to know that there are people that hold that dear to their heart to Thank see the land, okay? Thank you. All right. Hey. Ed White Neck, 8330 East New Carlisle Road. I can solve the problem with me. I'll just pack up and leave. Been here 40 years, right? When you guys come in, you, all you have to do is look at Park Town and all that crap that's up there. All they do is bastardize the land, and then we get, we get stuck with the bill, and that's what's going to happen here. 
you guys always want to create these communities that are transient. Then people ain't here to stay at 210,000, he was talking about income. 250,000, that's income. You want that kind of money to be spent inside your, we, we go up here to the coffee shop, we spend money at the gas stations, we spend it, trade it off. I'll go somewhere else. I'm already looking at property up north. Because every realtor that's come by has said it's gonna hurt my property. So you're not gonna pay for that, I'm paying for it. You're taking your money, putting it in you guys' pocket in New Carlisle, out of my pocket. My house was appraised at 400,000. That value is gonna go down. So what do I do now? I've worked all my damn life to pay for that damn place. It's paid for. Now you're going to take it. Ben, I know you, and you know damn well I've been here. Mm -hmm. I've supported the community. I spent tens of thousands of dollars at Ben's shop. Tens of thousands. I'll take that money. I'll go north. That pisses me. just torques me off that every time Bethel's gave it away to Huber Heights, and it's become a transit community. That community up there, there's, you look in there, and there's pages and pages of them house for sale. That's going to happen out there. Them people, 600 cars up and down that road. And the first thing that the Clark County residents do, a lot of them down our road, as soon as they hit that stop sign, because it's 25 to you guys' area, it's floorboarded with their foot clear out to the radiator all the way down to the end. That's true. They've hit my tree. Anybody you want to come out and stop? My tree is 40 feet off the road. They T-boned that tree. You see what I mean? So all that crap is coming. I know it's not you guys' problem, but it's up to you guys. If you want to create a community, then create a community that have people that's has our homes, not one that's 200,000, but a half a million dollar home out there. I ain't gonna complain. You go another hundred to what? I don't know how far. Is it. There's a million and a half dollar home down our road. Then people spent that money and built that home. But you're gonna crack up all these stuff. It's just apartments separated. That's all that's gonna be in there. If it's already done, it's done. I'll just leave. Mine's paid for, like I said. I'll leave the community. I'll take my money with me. You want that new car or do you want, you want people that's not gonna spend money here? All them people have to go down Scarf and Dayton Brant. Have you been on Dayton Brant? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You seen the curves? I think my brother's hit one of your trees years and years and years ago. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. How fast was he going when he hit it? At the, time, at the time when he was standing out there, I told the state patrol, I said, dude, you better get out of the highway. Get out of the road. He goes, oh, no, that's no problem. And here he comes. You can hear the wheels peeling coming from that stop sign, 70 mile an hour. About hit the damn state patrol down through there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm telling you, you best think about it. Because I don't know what these people are going to do, but I'll leave. I can guarantee it. You don't believe me? You'll see. I'll put a for sale sign out for them. You'll look at somebody else and leave it. I'll leave, but somebody else will buy it. But I'm not going to sit around and wait for you guys to pass that and take the money out of my pocket. So you do whatever you got to do. But I would think about it before you destroy all these people's lives. This worked all their lives. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Rodney Phipps, 930 Scarf Road. Um, Mr. Bridges, thank you for your information. Uh, and as you can tell, there's emotion involved on all of this. Um, what I would like to say, Mr. Bridges, you made the comment that we would not add a housing development <clears throat> that would not support the taxes or that it would be a negative impact on our tax base. So I'm asking that before this would ever be approved, it would not affect city income tax rates. What do you mean by that? Like they would not have a reduction well, of how much they pay? No, no, no. What I'm saying is there's lift stations, there's police protection, there's city maintenance, there's road maintenance. What there's, you mentioned that the sewer would have to be updated in some way to support that housing development. Those costs are going to be supported by the Nucleo residents, both old and new. Actually, any development cost will be borne by the developer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the lift stations and everything else <laughs> would, be developed. would be dealt with by them. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the water, the sewer upgrades that we would have to make to support that? So we've started looking at that. Our water plant it operates around 40% capacity now, so we have that growth uh, built into the water plant. Wastewater, we're going to have to focus on that a little bit. So we've done a lot of upgrades on that plant the past, what, four or five years. Uh, mm -hmm. We're getting clarifiers replaced. Uh, we will have to add to that and we can grow with that over time as these, as these developments do grow. 
Um, we do have utilities up at SCARF, so they're going to tie in more than likely right in that area. But again, that's 100% developer cost. And the new sewer, I mean, all that's not laid out, the sewer lines and stuff, so you really don't know where that is. No, we know where we end at. We know on SCARF where they're going to hook in at. Now, as okay. far as their plans, we, they haven't got that far yet. yet okay. Because it's just a concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, my concern, of course, is the schooling as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think either one of the school districts can support it, but uh, that progress needs to be made. I understand about growth, but I don't want to see this to be current residents paying the price sure. for more houses and the tax incentives going to the new places, getting a break so that we have to pay for that advance. That would be very unfortunate, and it wouldn't be the first time that it has happened. Sure. So, so thank you, council members, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Hi, my name is Justin Giles. I live at 8015 East New Carlisle Road. Um, I agree with a lot of the people that have been up here speaking about the annex as well. Um, I think we're losing way too much of our farmland. Um, my property actually butts right up next to the Clark family farm. Um, the land that is proposed to be annexed, I believe if you get on EPA's website, I believe it's part of the Honey Creek watershed. Um, uh, the owner of Silver Lake right here, um, you know, he's, he's talking about endangered species and stuff. Um, I can tell you just in my backyard, I found Eastern box turtles. Uh, which are are still on the endangered species list as well as a spotted turtle too. Um, I've also seen the bald, same bald eagle that he's talking about in that neighborhood, um, and I, I'm 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 very concerned about groundwater contamination because where that development's going at, I live down west of it, and I'm pretty sure everything in that Honey Creek watershed runs down to Dayton Brant through Marianne's property and behind my house, um, and. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I really agree with a lot of the people that are speaking here tonight. We're losing way too much of our farmland. I don't want to see New Carlisle turn into a, a, the next Huber Heights. Um, I, I think I think a lot of people here, you know, will agree with that and they don't want to see it happen. So, and I hope you guys take that into consideration too. You know, my wife and I, we moved here in 2018, bought a fixer upper house. Uh, it was a foreclosure. We bought it sight unseen, no inspections. Pretty much went all in on it put our whole life savings into it. And now, now if, I, if I had my house appraised right now, I bet it would appraise for over 350. And if this housing development goes in, you guys are putting in $250,000 houses, that's gonna drop the proper property value of my house. Mm -hmm. So again, I just hope you guys take it into consideration and uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kiko, can I ask you a question real quick? Um, when, and I don't, I don't know if you would know this, but when someone comes in to develop a piece of property, for example, with that lake there, uh, and like he was mentioning, water runoff, whatnot. Do they ever they ever look at it and say, okay, it's not going to work because of such reasons, or do they make it work, or do they think they can make it work? I mean, does, do they ever just look at it and turn away because they can't do it because the lake's in the wrong place or the you know the grade's wrong or whatever it may be? No, pretty much developers can make anything happen. Um, the, the what some of the issues are is when developers go in and build developments. A lot of times their initial erosion control mm -hmm. is always the number one issue. Okay. Once it's said and done, the storm is collected, discharged to creeks. Um, the sewer obviously is in sanitary. There's, there's no uh, outflow or like what right now everything basically is land runoff. Like I have a, uh, a drainage easement th through my property and it just it fills up with water and goes away where you don't have that in developments when they build like this. Okay. Um, but erosion control is usually your big issue in the beginning. Um, a lot of them will make almost anything grade to however they, mm -hmm. they do it. Okay. Um, but all impervious parts, they'll get, they, all that storm water gets taken away and delivered to pipes and out to the creek. Okay. Thank you. And there is a large section of that track that they're not even touching for development. It's the area around Silver Lake because it's elevated as it is with the, if you look at the topographic of that area, they're not even touching that Silver Lake area. So all that runoff is going to be directed away from the lake. Yeah, he's going to go down to Dayton Brant. Yeah. No, it's going to be collected. Storm, 
Storm water right now is, is runoff is going whatever way it wants to go, just based off the topographical. So when they do this, there's going to be storm water collection, and then it's going to be dispersed into probably correct waterways. So it's actually going to be a, your, your storm water runoff is actually going to be greatly improved. Right now we got nice spring water. You can drink it all day long. All right. Hey, let's let the let's let the lady go next, please, ma'am. My name is Margaret Callen. I live at 1769 Addison, New Carlisle Road. Um, I'm envious somewhat of uh, the lifelong residents here of the township. Um, my husband and I bought the house about four and a half years ago. Um, we're a military family. He retired at Wright-Patterson. Um, we've lived all over the United States and Europe. We've lived in apartment buildings, we've lived in townhomes, we've lived in base housing, and I understand the desire to own a home and to be able to own an affordable home. It's um, your first real way of building wealth um, for a family starting out. I don't begrudge anyone wanting to buy a, buy a new home. I don't begrudge a farmer of wanting to um, sell his land because Farmers have a really hard time making a profit. You buy everything at retail, your equipment, your seed, your chemicals, um, the fuel to operate everything, and then you sell at wholesale. Um, farmers pray for rain, but when it rains and a compact housing development pops up, um, I don't think that's the answer to anyone's prayers, really. Um, uh, the 80 acres or 82 acres that are surrounding us because I'm outside of city limits we're in Bethel Township so the only way to develop that obviously is to annex that property um, it's my understanding that perhaps you all are responsible for designating the zoning for that property how many houses could be built there so the density of the housing is sort of up to you. Um, I understand the desire of expanding the tax base because that theoretically should lower everyone's taxes, although maybe not mine if I'm still in the township, sandwiched in between uh, city limits. Um, we love this community. We lived in Vandalia for a little while when we first moved here from Colorado. And we were just keeping our eye open for a little, a little farm, a little property out in the country where we could plant some berries and plant some fruit trees and have a little more room to spread out, a little elbow space, um, versus the 10 or 12 feet between houses in the subdivision we were at in Vandalia. So um, we love our old house on four acres. We love living here. We love um, the community. The, um, the Heritage of Flight Festival is, no festival can really compare. The fireworks at Fourth of July, the ball drop on New Year's Eve, this is a wonderful community. Um, I hope that as plans for development <clears throat> progress, that you will um, consider the current residents, the values of our property, and allow development that would enhance both the financial well-being of the city and not detract from the home values of, of my home personally and these homeowners uh, out on Scarf Road and then I didn't even know about the other development potentially up on up 235. Um, if the city needs to grow and the city needs to add to the tax base I would just ask that all of you prayerfully consider thy neighbor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Shelley Vickery, uh, 8780 East New Carlisle Road. Could you do your name one more time? Shelley Vickery. Thank you. And um, we live right across from the large acreage that's going to be the development and one of the things I want to ask is if we're saying that, it, that none of this is finalized yet does New Carlisle have the ability to say we're not going to allow that many houses that small of lots if none of this is in 
you know, um, sealed in stone yet, then I would think that you would have that ability, which is going to help considerably with a lot of the things that people are talking about, property values, um, the, the water issues, and, you know, a lot more green space. You know, Miami County, I think, currently has a minimum two acre um, for building on, so who's going to make that determination? We zone it, right? We will. It's going to be our put, so basically the developer will go and say this is how many lots we have, and it's and based off that plan. And then it comes to It's us. no different than Twin Creeks. These housing developments are decent sized housings on small lots. And so you have the ability to say the minimum lot size is two acres. Um, that's a lot for a city to have a house on. And Miami County is not like that. I do believe Elizabeth Township, I think, has a restriction. Well, Miami County, County is that. Yeah, I think it would be tough for that to do that. Um, Bethel but Township. We, we would not recommend Bethel that Township to council. Is. Yeah, we would not recommend that to council. It would, it would be similar to the housing developments that you see going up elsewhere. You know, small houses, small lots. So when you're saying a small house, what size, what square footage are you talking about? We don't know. We we all we, all we have is around two hundred fifty thousand the starting price on those house on those homes. We don't know square footage. We don't know any of that yet. Again, it's so early. Um, it has to go through Bethel first. It has to go through Miami County first, and then it comes to us. So until we have something finalized, we can't. Honestly, it's it's a Miami County issue. We don't have anything to go on other than they want to come in at this point. Time. Right, but does does, mm -hmm. does the council have the ability to decline no, the no, plans that would, the builder it, brings? It, it would go through our planning board, and our planning board would vote on that site plan. Council does not have the authority to override our planning board. So it does, does, does the information from this meeting get get mm. provided to the planning board? Yeah, they'll meet on the 22nd, right? But they're not they're not discussing this yet because nothing formal has come mm. to them yet. Yep. Okay. So we understand everyone's concern, but we just have to stress, until we get word from the petitioner that everything's filed, we're not doing anything because I'm not going to put forth their city resources just in case something falls through and it doesn't happen. But once they put that petition into annex through Miami County, that's when it's going to signify, signal us to do our things, and that's get with council, get a statement of services together, you know, look at that land use zoning because there is something in the ORC that says we have to now dictate what that zoning is going to be. But we can anticipate it's going to be like any other residential plan unit development. That's just how they are. The developer is not going to want a house on one acre because he's not getting his bang for his buck. That's really what yeah. it comes down to. But it, it, comes, right. it will go through our planning board. The actual site plan approval would. And that's an open meeting? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything that council does is always publicized, or any, any of the boards does, uh, planning board, BZA, all that is open, uh, subject to the sunshine laws like council is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Why do you always get that look on your faces when I come up here? Do you want my name again, Ms. Berner? You know me. I'm good. Uh, Mr. Bridge, this question, I guess, is probably most appropriate for you. I'm just playing devil, devil's advocate a little bit while I'm running this over in my head. So let's say, let's say the, the landowner petitions, um, and that all goes through Miami County, and it comes before council, and council votes no. Is it possible that this landowner can still do this development without the support infrastructurally from the city of New Carlisle? Well, that's when you're going to get a little, you know, it, very, yeah, good question, but you got to look at it like this. Council already has a policy it's called the Comprehensive Land Use Plan that says we are to go after these type of developments. It's pretty black and white. It says we like our puts. So let's say council votes no on that. That developer can actually bring suit against the city for not really operating according to their current policies. So um, there's always an option to appeal a decision any governing body makes through appellate, through appellate courts. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Let's just say the council says no to this annexation service agreement. I would probably say that the developer would counter that and say, why not? And then use the force and brute muscles they have that they can do. Um, 
because really annexation laws in Ohio are geared for the applicant, which is the guy who developer who bought the farm, and the municipality who and, and takes it. So if they say yes and that petitioner says yes, it's going to be hard to stop. Even if they say no, there will still be a ways for that guy to, for, for, to get his project done. Well, I meant like outside of legal channels. Like let's say the city of New Carlisle says no, we are not going to let you tie into our sewer and water and all of that. Like they, they can, go on a well system or something? Yeah, like they can make that well, happen I'm, however they see fit, I'm correct? I'm answering that. That's a Miami County question, Brandy. I don't know. I don't know okay. Miami County rules and law regulation when it comes to that kind of stuff. I would have to say I would have to say that that size of development is not going to go on septic. There's no way. Could it? Well, I wouldn't think so either. I'm just saying that even if this, what I'm getting at is, is even if the city of New Carlisle says no, it is still possible that this is going to happen and there's... Yeah, they don't need us. If they don't, if they don't want our water and sewer, then we're out of it, and they move on how they see fit. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hi again, Marianne Layton, eight zero eight five East New Carlisle Road. The development does not have has not purchased the property. They have a contract with the landowner, contingent on if it gets annexed because they cannot build this without New Carlisle's water and sewer. Because Miami County, I was talking to them last night, trustees, we do not have any water or sewer down here. It has, so if it doesn't get annexed, DDC is not going to purchase the land because they can't put that many houses in there. Okay, we were told that the sale had already went through, so whatever you're hearing, what we're hearing is conflicting. So I guess we'll have to check the county uh, records for that. Well, I'll uh, just double check with the owner tomorrow because he told me that he ain't got a check yet. And Miami County uh, Engineer's Office has already granted uh, a, a goodwill that they would have no problem uh, the city of New Carlisle servicing that with water and sewer. Okay, Should I'm sorry, would you repeat that again? Yeah, we have, uh, issue, we have word from Miami County that they would have no issues with the city supplying water and sewer to that development. Mm -hmm. with, yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't have any problem with New yep. Carlisle doing it. No, exactly. Because what they look at is when a week ago I was talking to Charlotte Cooley, who's the Miami County Administrator, and one of the things that we, we have to look at is, let's say, your county, Miami County, Mm -hmm. And the township you live in, which is not the city limits in New Carlisle, it's completely different. And it's a different governing board, different, different everything. Only thing we share is a zip code. So, um, crap, I just lost my train of thought. I do apologize. But anyway, where was I at? Sorry. Does anyone, anyone can help me out? Come on, no one's paying attention? He's talking to Charlotte. Charlotte, thank you. So, yes, there's one of the development things we have issues. Let's say that Miami County has a plan to put a sewer system over in that area of the town. Then we could not touch that. So one of the things that we had to do is clear that with Miami County Engineering. So they said, yes, we have no plans to develop that. We would have no issues with that particular development being serviced by New Carlisle Sewer and Water, given the fact that we have it right across the street. So that was coming from Miami County. Miami County. I want to say the engineer's office, but I'm not. I'm, don't quote me on that. Okay, I'll double check tomorrow. Thank you. I can send you the email if you want. Do you have your email address? I'll be more than happy to send it. Yes, you want me to holler it down yeah. now? Um, you can see me after the meeting. Yeah. Number one. The number one, Marianne Layton at gmail.com. Okay, you can come see me later and just like make sure I get it right. <laughs> All right, anyone else? <laughs> I'm Steve Durrell, 918 Scarf Road. I've lived there since 1985, and uh, it's a great place to live up there. Um, but what I've got a question is, which governmental agency controls the zoning up there? Would that be Bethel Township, Miami County, or Miami County itself? Which, which body? handles the zoning. And if it's annexed then it's going to be the city. Pardon? If it's, if it's annexed then the city will have the zoning on it. But the zoning's probably going to be the governing things that the RPUD puts in. Okay. The RPUD has two zoning layers. It has a, <coughs> you live in this back here, you could get a accessory structure, 
it has to match the siding every house. Those are called covenants. We don't touch those. Let's just say that um, someone's parking illegally in their grass. We would issue the violation for that. Um, they would develop it, set the site plan out. The site plan's approved by our planning board. So that's the, really the involvement when it comes in, but it will be an R PUD. So you'll have two layers of zones there, covenants and then the city zones as well. Now, approximately uh, 20 years ago, there was a proposal to uh, uh, subdivide that land out there. And uh, uh, some of the people on East New Carlisle Road were uh, very forthcoming with petitions. And uh, we signed them all up and down Scarf Road and, and other areas. And anyway, they were successful in, in defeating that because uh, it was either the county or the uh, township had zoned that into um, not to be sold uh, less than five acre lots. If that's so, what, what happened to that? I mean, um, that's a Miami Yeah, I, I don't know anything about the city doesn't have any of those restrictions. We have okay. restrictions on and we do we I mean, it's very common. We have different zones in the city. We have R2 residential zones up to R7s. R2s are bigger yards, bigger houses. R7s mm -hmm. are like the Prentice Drives, the, you know, the, what else is up there? Drake, very small houses, very small yards. So each zoning layer has its own standard set as how big is that lot's gotta be? How big is the house gotta be? How far off of the road is that house got to be? Each different, each district is different. So think of this R HUD as just another zoning district, like the Twin Creeks Covenants. You know, all the houses have to be 25 feet off the back of the road. You gotta have, I think, six feet in between each property line, so 12 feet total. And then, you know, various of other little things. But again, that's all done by um, the covenants. And we'll have some say in those covenants because we can't, we don't want those, you know, front setbacks to be five foot off of the back of the sidewalk. We want that to be at least 20, 20 feet back. So we'll work with the developer when it comes to that. But they're not gonna budge too much on, I want four houses, for every two acres. That's just not economically beneficial for them. And, you know, not economically beneficial for the city either. But that's that's how they're gonna look, I'm just being very honest with you. That's how they're gonna look at mm -hmm. it. Now I, I realize what you said about annexation, you know, then you would have some say there or or these say. But uh, but currently who which body do we talk to? Um, it's not even at the city yet. So as we stressed multiple times tonight, it really needs to be directed towards Bethel, Miami County, and then Miami County itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, now, um, Miami County Park District um, doesn't seem to have much out in this area in, in the New Carlisle area, except for Charleston Falls is the closest one. And uh, with what this gentleman's in front of me here said, about the um, uh, environmental concerns out there at Silver Lake. I've walked back there and I've been amazed at what I've seen. I've traveled all over the United States in national parks and, and everything and, and uh, I'm, I'm amazed at what is less than a half mile from me. I mean, it's, it's just amazing what's, what's down there. And uh, I, I think there should be um, maybe some environmental impact statements or something like that uh, be looked into to see what's there, what the threats would be. Um, in fact, I, I thought there, there was some talk years ago about creating a um, uh, Miami County Park District uh, park there at Silver Lake, like a Silver Lake Reserve or something of that nature. And uh, if so, Huh? It was an offer for the family design. Yeah. That was, that was some years ago. Yeah. They, maybe they might have a different. No. They don't? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, yeah, it, it's, it's possible, though. Um, I'd like to see some interest there and, and uh, see what this gentleman had to say about some of the environmental things and like to see some ideas put together and and if, if something like that were to happen it would uh, require probably that acreage for um, park use and uh, you know buffer zone for the park 
you can't have 250 homes built out there and and call that a buffer zone for such a preserve. So um, I'd just like to see some forethought, as this gentleman up here suggested, that uh, some of that be considered when uh, it comes time to make decisions. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Vickery. I live at 8780 East New Carlisle Road. Um, one of the things I was kind of wondering, so is that going to be like governed and like living here in town? You know, would, would the cops be taking care of them guys over there as far as if they're running a dirt bike up and down the street? Is that, which is illegal here, I mean, are the, is that illegal there? Well, it'd be in the city, but I, I think we would have to work, you know, we would have to talk to the, to Miami County as far as who would patrol it, whether it be a county car or a city car, so. You know, because I, I live across the street and I got a couple acres and I got a quad and I let my grandson ride it in the yard and, you know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we're in the country, this is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a problem later on? If you don't live in the city, if you live across the street, Right dead not across an, the street. That's not being annexed then. So you guys are still be Bethel. Well, you're Miami. annexing in the place down the street on the same side of mine. Yeah, but that's unless your parcel number is included in that, which it's not, you're not going to be subject to New Carlisle zoning. You're still going to be in Bethel Clark. In Miami. Bethel. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to have. Now let's say that we run water and sewer down there and you guys want to tie into that. You guys very well could be in the city at some point in time if you tie into our water. Super well, unless they mess my water up, I'm going to tell you that's one of the things that was a benefit for me. We mm -hmm. have rarely good spring water there. Sure, sure. You know, and that's part of the reason when mm -hmm. we lived there 17 years and it ain't killed me yet. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I, I drink <laughs> it every thing. day. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Just stress, if you're not in that farmland, you're across the street, you're not being annexed in. Yeah. Well, I'm a little worried about because the ponds are over there sure. and that water does run right underneath the street, you know, mm -hmm. and, and into the pond next to my house, you know, yeah. and everything. And there's a lot of the wildlife right there, too. Sure. I mean, I gave my niece a, a bullfrog about this big one time to bring it to Shelly. She really appreciated it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, sure. you know, we see hawks and, like I said, the eagles and all that. It's, you know, that's part of the reason we moved there. We, sure. We didn't want to see people. I can tell you that. Our neighbors are nice. I, I, understand. <laughs> I have woods in my backyard. I would be concerned, too, if it was being developed. So I, you have every right to be where you're at, voicing the concerns that you have. Yeah, I mean, and the developer have every right to do business, but that's just where we are. We're in that fight where it's just like who, you know, we you get this concern, you have that concern. Governing bodies try to take everyone's best interest and concern, but at the end of the day, there's only, we're all bound by law. We're all bound by the scene code, our own code, the Howard Rise code, you know, and that's what, what they go off of. I'm, I'm assuming the developer's done his due diligence. I know I would if I'm making that much of an investment to look at the environmental side of things. Right. And I think indicative of when we got the conceptual plan that we've all seen, the fact that he's not developing anywhere near where the lake is probably is signifying that he's started to kind of look at that from an environmental standpoint already. These, this, this is not the first rodeo these developers have been down with when it comes to these developments. Right, but yeah. you know that that's all ground fed spring, you know. So sure. he's gonna he's gonna plant right on top of it. Sure, sure, and I'm sure they're. You know, I, and I ain't sure that you can really. I mean, maybe you can do that, but you know, it just seems like it would be something that you really wouldn't want to somebody to do. Well, we will tell you this from experience that the EPA is very attuned to what governments do. So if there's any- Good, I'm gonna call EPA them every will, day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, that-, that I, I, You know, I got 10 yeah. minutes every day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, anyone else? I, I got one else. Actual so, uh, Steve Callen, 1769 Addison, New Carlisle Road. Mm -hmm. And I, I mainly have a, a question uh, about the 83 acres and kind of, I really just wanted to kind of find out where we're at, what's the status of that. Uh, I kind of wanted to give everybody else a chance to talk through the, the situation out here on SCARF. Sure. But uh, it sounds like we're about to wrap up. What is the status of that? I, I went from 
seeing the harvesters there a few months ago to seeing engineers taking soil samples mm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, and we were surprised by that, of course. Uh, do, can you provide an update or a status it, what we're, where it stands? Yeah, what we have and what we shared is what we know. Um, and we were very surprised too when all this uh, and all this action came towards us. So we shared your surprise, man. Uh, sure. So right now we have the R, we call it R, RD2, which is Residential Development 2. So what we have right now, so let's reiterate it for the record, is approximately 83 acres of land situated in Clark County, north of Northwood Subdivision and east of Addison Carlisle Road. Mm -hmm. We know that Structure Point is an engineering firm. That's what you saw after doing your soil samples sure. and stuff. And, uh, and they have contacted the city regarding potential residential development on the site, which is why we have the information we have. Um, Arbor Homes has been named as a home developer, the builder on that one. So the big difference between one, Miami County, and two, the one we're talking about now, is this one actually has a developer and a home builder. And they're doing soil samples. Yes. Whereas the Miami County one is just beginning. So um, it says annexation has only been discussed so far. No filings have been made. So again, with this particular annexation, since it is in Clark County, they'll file that position with Clark County. The Clark County commissioners will then, you know, the agent will then notify us that the, the intent to annexation has been submitted to the county commissioners. Um, but again, that has not happened yet. Um, and again, we stress that no concepts or applications have been submitted to us at this point in time. So we have a conceptual plan for the Miami County one, no conceptual plan for this one. Great. Yep. The question I would have for you, then, as you know, we have four acres, small farm, you know, just enough to, you know, keep us mm -hmm. entertained. Um, in, the, in the event that that is annexed, and what, um, what would the city do to provide us privacy or because we you know we're going to stand out in the middle of that if mm. it's three homes per acre we're and we're one house on four acres we're definitely going to stand out yeah what provisions are available uh for privacy for us as we continue to try to maintain that rural life sure uh, you know yeah. with animals and mm. whatnot i would invite you to definitely come to the planning board because the planning board can take that into consideration yeah and when is that the next um, planning we, board? We don't know. We, we don't, uh, the, their next meeting is the 22nd, but that doesn't mean they're going to talk about this. Yes. Okay. But when that, once, just pay attention to like the city's Facebook page. Once we, they submit the site plan design, that's when you really want to go to these meetings. Okay. The planning board could be like, okay, great. Yeah, we love it. We love what it looks like. However, we do have concerns with some neighboring partner, uh, residential areas. Maybe they make the developer put a line of pine trees in or a fence or whatever the case may be. You can do landscape buff okay. buffers. So that you don't want like sometimes some people don't want the fence because it's not natural. It could be a series of a 20 foot stretch with, like I said, pine trees or something. And we, we would address sure. our concerns at that time. Absolutely. And that's been when you get very helpful. Say, yep. Yeah, for the sake of everyone's time, the, thank you for that. No, no problem. Sure. Thank you, sir. Mayor, a motion to adjourn. Does everyone spoken? Looks like it. I second. Mr. Vice Chair, was the second? Second was Grim. Yes, sir. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yeah. Councilman Lindsay? <coughs> Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Yes. Trying to think what we vote. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Vice Mayor Grim? Yes. Motion to return except 60. <laughs>